Hey guys, welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back if you're a subscriber. My name is Neil and it's time for another episode of Would I Lie to You? Today we're going back to Series 7 and an early appearance of Rod Gilbert. I'm becoming a bigger and bigger fan of Rod the more I see of him. He's got a very convincing style, very cocksure and confident, but somehow it, he sells it well. Who else is in this episode? Dara O'Brien. I think I'm pronouncing his last name properly, but forgive me, my Gaelic pronunciation is terrible. I have seen him on QI many a time, so uh, I think he's going to be really good on this. I don't know who Vernon Kay is, and the other competitor is uh, Denise Van Outen, which makes me think of, I think her name was Candace Van Outen, who played Melisandre on Game of Thrones, but I don't believe... Denise is related to her, so that's just a complete tangent. Ignore me. Anyway, this is episode one from series seven featuring Rod Gilbert. Let's watch it. On David Mitchell's team tonight, he's as funny as he's tall, and tall as he's bald, and as bald as he's funny. It's the funny ball tall, Dar O'Brien! <laughs> the only man lucky enough to see Tess daily from <laughs> Splash and Family Fortunes TV presenter Vernon Kay. <laughs> an actress who starred in both A Midsummer Night's Dream and Strictly Come Dancing. So we've seen her bottom and her cha-cha. It's Denise Van Outen. <laughs> And a comedian who, on his show about work experience, did a stint as a dustman. Although you don't really need training for that, you just pick it up as you go along. It's Rod Gilbert! <laughs> in nightclubs, in order to impress the ladies, I used to break into my special catwalk move. No, oh, he's gonna have to demonstrate. You mean like a model, or were you on all fours and weeing? <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, could you demonstrate for us now? Well, no, that'd be, that'd be ridiculous. Uh, yeah, no, that's because... why I'm asking. Yeah. <laughs> if I showed you yeah. I, I, that I did a very good catwalk move, yeah. then obviously I'm telling the truth. Not but necessarily. You could do... be lying, but you are able to do it. I would occasionally stand on one leg, and if I said demonstrate, you'd go, no, because if, if I stand on one leg, it'll prove I can do it. And I'd go, no, <laughs> proves you can stand on one leg. It didn't prove that you used to do it in nightclubs. So I, I ask you again. <laughs> no arguing with Lee Mack. We're in a nightclub now, nightclub setting. Yeah. I'm single, I'm well up for it, I'm from Essex. I'll take this. <laughs> <laughs> what is about Essex? I know Essex is like the go-to for that kind of joke. Could someone explain to me why? The swivel, swivel of, of the, the face. face. Wow. Of How the do you face. swivel oh, your face? It's very difficult. I can swivel it's... my face. Really? I mean, that's swivelling it, isn't it? No, no, the head's no, the no, thing no, your no, face no, is no. on. I think it would be right for you mm. to show us this move. Yeah, no one gets away with not... I don't know if we've got anything ready, but hit it. <laughs> So I'm slightly backstage here. I'm nervous. I'm ready to go, right? This will be the catwalk area here. When I hit the bend, watch for the swivel, right? <laughs> <laughs> yep, no. He absolutely did it. He absolutely did it. He has sold me. That was nice. Swivel. The swivel, the swivel of your head rather yeah. than your face. <laughs> what, what you're asking for would require surgery. <laughs> would that have done anything for you in a nightclub? Would it got her attention? No, not really. <laughs> Ten years ago, more me hair. Laugh. I'm not let me fight and wait here, right? Uh... <laughs> Men are so indecisive. Let's just go with the truth. I'm not sure about that. Let's go with the truth. <laughs> you're being bullied into saying it's the well, truth. Go for the truth. Oh, Let's go for a truth. It, it's the truth. It is. True. Yeah. See, he, he was too good. He should have come out and been less polished. I once got a tattoo because I was told that it would disappear after three years. It was actually live on TV I was tattooed, and it was on the Big Breakfast. Had you not previously heard of tattoos? <laughs> they were a German company and they came on the show and they claim that they had this, this new ink that would fade after three years. So can we see it? No, because it's in a place where I don't really want to get it out. What do you mean? I wanted to have saucy tattooed across there. <laughs> I've got a potato tattoo on my back. I might have to undo a button first. Yeah, undo a button. I'll sort it out, don't worry. All right. 
<laughs> well, this is intimate. Uh, that he I has a potato tattoo. Potato. Yeah. It's a so good tattoo of a potato. potato. Why have you got that? Rod, if I were you, Rod, if I were you, I'd have that checked out. <laughs> has it changed shape in the last few years? <laughs> it's malignant. There's gonna be a chip on his shoulder. Yeah. <laughs> It was worth it just for that. I don't mind showing you. Oh. <laughs> Have you taken legal action against the people who promised you that it would be there for just No, because I don't know who they are. A or me. Group to of anonymous German men <laughs> turned up <laughs> on the big breakfast. But it was the big said, breakfast. Yeah, we, we would like to maybe tattoo you in a secret place. What I can't believe is that you'd think that a tattoo wouldn't last forever. It's a lie. We take take a decision. We think What's it's a mean? lie then. Mm. We think yeah, I think I agree with them. True. Oh! Wow. That's great. Wow. Yeah, wow. Lee didn't even believe her. Did say that I was the only one. Only you. <laughs> what is going on here? No, seriously. <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> <laughs> Don't look. <laughs> uh, Bryden is so freaking over the top. So please welcome this week's special guest, Mel. Mel. Mel looks put together. Nice vest. This is Mel, and he came to the rescue when I almost blew up a banana factory. Bananas don't belong in factories. Well, there's something more bizarre about almost blowing up a banana factory. <laughs> what did you actually do in the banana factory? What is a banana factory? Bananas come in from a foreign land. Yes. I say the Caribbean. Yeah. And they are ripened in Bolton. That's actually true. Like they add certain gases. What, what was did your you job? Do? I I Were you the banana straightener? Or were you the banana bender? Maybe they come in straight. <laughs> and it's his big muscly body that turns them into that shape. <laughs> what are you up to? Oh you know, just usual, bending me bananas. <laughs> It's a banana ripening plant anyway, not a factory. Well, it's a factory because there was a conveyor belt. So someone puts it on and it's green. <laughs> and by the end of the conveyor belt, it's ripened. How big? And more to the point, well, what are you doing other than... <laughs> <laughs> Mel, he was one of the, the foremen. I was on a, a forklift truck. And, and what happened was I uh, drove into a gas heater. The factory filled up with gas. <laughs> Mel shut down the factory and evacuated the building. Uh, this is Mel. He's the postman who had to retrieve my phone from a post box when I accidentally posted it instead of a letter I was carrying. <laughs> what were you supposed to be posting? I had a card and two normal letters. The nearest post box to me has a very narrow aperture. I know the kind of thing. Well, for, you know. <laughs> well, so you thought I'd just post whatever fits and that was your phone? <laughs> I was contemplating what an outdated medium snail mail was, and I thought this will show them. <laughs> the two letters and the phone go in at the same time. Yeah. So um, you emailed it and put a hard copy in at the same time. <laughs> Luckily, Mel had also fallen in. <laughs> and, uh, he just reached it out, didn't he? I hadn't realised that pillar boxes were manned until then. <laughs> um, the last collection of the day was happening about half an hour later. I know what I'll do. I'll simply wait. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, David. I'm gonna go banana factory already. This is Mel. Uh, one night we were out stargazing and we were quizzed by the police because they thought we were peeping toms. I want that to be the true story. We at. were looking at a meteor shower. You got the telescope? No, you don't. What have you got? You've got a, you just use binoculars. You don't use a telescope because they move quite quickly. So you'd have to be really fast on a telescope. You'd be playing it like a ch like that. Uh, we could see the police car coming, at the, yeah, because it just drove along and then stopped. Two men but, standing in the middle of Ealing Common. There's houses all around, but with binoculars. Yeah, but you're looking. Surely you're not. You don't look at you like that, right? Right up in the air. To be fair, nobody goes like this when they're using binoculars, right? Head up and now binoculars. They don't do they that. Do. They go, look at that up there. Oh yeah. Yeah. But have you seen the moon tonight? Wait, wait, wait. I need a bit of a run up. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget Dara's face moves independently from his head as well. That's true, yes. <laughs> I think the difficult thing is that Mel's got a tan, but you can get a tan in all three of those jobs. You know the stargazing's done predominantly at night. <laughs> if I saw Dara and Mel on yeah. Ealing Common, I would think they were a couple of pervs. But Dara could have said, it's OK, I work in TV. And the police would go, well, that makes it impossible. <laughs> <laughs> We are going to say that, in fact, Dara was cautioned by the police 
Caution no, actually it means something. Sorry, no, he wasn't caution. Okay, so, right, he was, he question. Was, he was question. Question, sorry. I've never formally <laughs> cautioned <No>. with any... <laughs> Banana factory. I'm Mel, and uh, I rescued Vernon after one really... <laughs> Yes. Love it. One of the codes I live my life by. <laughs> oh, that was a good start. <laughs> <laughs> Is that my appearance should be in no way noteworthy. But then again, not so unnoteworthy as to be in itself noteworthy. <laughs> What do you think? Well, if it is true, you're certainly carrying it off. <laughs> <laughs> well, the way I felt it. comfortable being yeah. sort of gradually formed into the philosophy, yeah. and I don't think that's too grandiose a term, that, I've, <laughs> that I have read off a card for you right. today. <laughs> Since you've got a beard, yeah. you have become more noteworthy. Because I've grown a beard, some people have said, oh, I see you've grown a beard, or he's got a beard, look at his beard. And I hate Can I just... this moment of being physically noticed. Do you really enjoy growing a beard? I mean, I haven't, like, hugely enjoyed it. It's not no. been like a brilliant roller coaster. <laughs> <laughs> just very, very slightly I've enjoyed it. And very slightly also I've had a sense of achievement. Of course, it's, it is no achievement. It's actually a failure in personal hygiene. <laughs> <laughs> I want to know not what you consider noteworthy. I want to know what you consider so unnoteworthy that it becomes noteworthy. A grey tie. Be so colourless, so not wanting to draw the eye, it would draw the eye. It's how you spot spies, isn't it? People are <laughs> trying, to... trying to blend in so much, they blended in so much they're noticeable. If there was a chameleon in here, yeah. it would stand out. <laughs> I'll tell you what, if there was a chameleon wow. in here, it'd stand out. <laughs> uh, he's actually maybe got me persuaded. I think it's true. I think it's very plausible that David would... It's uh, plausible, but that doesn't make it yeah, true. Yeah, I think it's true. Yes, well, of course it's true. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's true. I once dug up my dead hamster... Uh-oh. ...and gave it a wash. <laughs> Are you done? What age were you when you bought it? Oh. And what age were you when it bought it? 25. Oh, it's, you were an adult! I thought you were like a kid. Twenty-five. Six. So I think we're six. You weren't nine, is what we're basically getting here. No, I tell you what, maths really is your strong point. Yeah. Twenty. <laughs> 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 hamster. You had a hamster in your mid twenties. Did you? Surely it? that's not the bit you should be focusing on. <laughs> so his name was Yanto. What? I A N T O, I think. Does it have? Does it to be honest, it? I never had cause to write. <laughs> <laughs> Did Once. you not put a little tombstone, thus making it easy for you later to dig him up and wash him? <laughs> he did have a tombstone, yeah, of sorts. It was a lollipop stick. <laughs> it had a joke on it. How, how long was it under the earth before you dug it up? Was it sort of months uh, later? No, or? probably a day or two. It was in a container, yeah. What was the container? A smoothie bottle. <laughs> <laughs> How did you get the hamster into the smoothie bottle? <laughs> With the lolly stick. <laughs> <laughs> you sort of forced him in. So yeah. I, I imagine I had to, he was dead. I tried persuading him, but it didn't work. <laughs> How would you get the hamster out to wash it? Oh, I didn't. Or did you put the water in the bottle, put the lid back on, give it a shake? You'd want to put lots of fizzy drink in, shake it up, and <laughs> poof, he's out. <laughs> Why? You felt you had to clean him because he well because he had like a strawberry Mohican. It was gone stiff. I hadn't rinsed it out properly. Can you describe the <laughs> the, the washing? The washing of him doesn't stand out that much in my. It was a fairly straightforward rinse and blow dry, as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> I washed as much of that strawberry smoothie out of his sticky, brittle hair as I could. And said our goodbyes and buried him in the garden. Do you think he's telling the truth? I don't. No. Yes. We're saying it's a lie. It's, it's the lie, truth. Though. I don't know why, but it's the truth. Because the, the, the man sold the car to pay for tapas. Obviously, it's true. <laughs> 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 uh, I can reveal that uh, Lee's team have won by four points to one. And my individual liar of the week this week is Dara O'Brien. <laughs> yes. Night. Not a rod heavy episode, but a completely I'm, I'm gonna remember that story for a long time.
it must have been a wide mouth smoothie bottle. Because I know hamsters can probably squeeze through pretty tight spaces, but but like they say, how do you get him back out? <sighs> so many questions, because if he buried him in the bottle, how would he know that there was then strawberry smoothie in his hair unless... Like, did he fully excavate him, or did he put him in the bottle, realize that there was strawberry smoothie in his hair, and then get him out of the bottle, like, the bottom, the last inch of ketchup, and then uh, give him a good wash and blow dry? Uh, <laughs> I don't know, but I love it. Uh, <laughs> great story. Anyway, thank you guys so much for joining me. As always, stay tuned. In a couple of days, I'll be doing another one of these. Until then, take care, stay healthy, and we'll see you soon. Cheers.